Hey. Win one. Uh, about eight minutes. Can I have that one you're done? Yeah, you can just, <laughs> just let me concentrate, dude. Just a tricky little region. <laughs> Consonant and vowel warm up. Oh yeah. my god, acting school was 10 years ago, dude. Oh, Shut the fuck up. That doesn't mean we still can't prepare and be professional. You need to be on your voice and be ready. You never know who'll be in the crowd, man. It could be agents, critics, directors. We don't... Oh my god, will you grow up, mate? Look, it's our first Sydney Fringe Festival show, mate. No one gives a shit. No one cares. Okay, they didn't even put us on at the factory. They've stuck us here at the den. Yeah. We wrote all those skits with exit stage right and left. There's nowhere to even exit. We're just going to have to stand at the wall. <laughs> That's going to be really fucking awkward, but it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't mean we still don't have to be prepared. Like, you, you never know who will be in the audience. For all you know, it could be someone like... Sp who are you going to say? Who are you going to say? <laughs> Sporting personality. You're going to say Spielberg, you fucking moron! That is such amateur community theatre acting bullshit. It's, oh, we've got to do our best performance. You don't know who's going to be in the audience. It could be some massive Hollywood director or producer. He's going to see our performance, piss himself, rape me on our yacht, and then fucking throw him in, in his film. Oh, Where the fuck would he be here? He's a right, billionaire! Hey, motherfucker! Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say Spielberg. I'm just saying... You don't know who will be here. We know exactly who's going to be here. It's going to be my workmates, your friends, that travelling theatre group, and then those Japanese businessmen that were looking for a good time and misread the flyer. So fucking well. <laughs> and at the end of it all, our friends will still be our friends, our workmates will be our workmates, and the Japanese guys will be pissed off. Dude, okay, you don't seem to understand. People have paid money. Oh, 15 bucks. I spend all that on lunch every day, man. Fucking obviously, dude. I was going to have a little bit of a chat to you about that. You said you were going to try and lose a bit of pride. Hey, I've lost show. seven kilos, okay? Have you? Can't really notice. I'm just, I'm just you saying. What the fuck? I'm just saying, man. You need to be professional. You need to be prepared. And at your best. And you're not anywhere near your best. Why do you give a shit that's... about me looking at my best for a show, man? All you're worried about is when you're up there in the bar trying to pick up after the show, you're going to have me standing there. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. That is not entirely uh -huh. Uh -huh. true. I, yeah. I'm also concerned about your health. Bullshit. Yeah. Remember that show we did at the new theatre? Remember? We had that duologue bit and the audience would laugh and we were really funny. That, that was thing. fucking hilarious. We were hilarious. <laughs> really that funny. Was really, really I was good. funnier. Fuck you. No, I was funny. The audience was laughing more at my stuff. And at the end of it, who did those three chicks give their number to? Hmm? It was two months ago. Wasn't you! It? You didn't even have your phone on. You had to write all the names down in my phone. I was like, like Joel, Theatre Skank 1, Joel, Theatre Skank 2. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I didn't know you did that. I appreciate that very much. I don't know why you bothered, because I never called them. So that was I know you didn't call them. They started calling me, asking me to find out from you why you weren't calling them. I had to make up all these excuses. I was like, oh, he's in Afghanistan, planting <laughs> flowers. Did you do the RSPCO um, animal shelter volunteer one that I told it's you? It's a great excuse, and I might have used it had I given a shit. <sighs> oh, what, whatever, whatever. <laughs> just, I just, it's just, I'm a little bit stressed, man, a little bit concerned. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just worried that the show we've come up with for tonight, I'm just, I'm worried it might be... Like shit, like not very good. No, <laughs> fuck you, man. No, 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 no. You cannot do this shit to me just right. before we go. Yeah. You know I get anxiety, and, and this is not what you I knew you someone was on your mind as well, because as soon as I came in here, you were shaving your balls. Oh, you only <laughs> shave your balls when you're nervous. You I'm piece good. of shit. I fucking turned around and saw you shaving your ass crack, and I knew something was wrong. I was shaving my ass because I saw you shaving your balls. I always shave you my balls me off. before a show. It's what I do when I get nervous. Look. I fucking shaved them this morning, look at them! Oh, dude, they're you really need to show them to someone. I am! Dude, like a doctor! <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> there, was, there was something else. Oh, fuck's sake. Was there? There was an omen on the train. Please, tell me all about it. Between Milson's Point and Wynyard. Yeah? I was sitting in the aisle seat. A girl walked past and farted on my face. <laughs> 
That's hilarious. We should use that. Well, and we're not using it in the show. No, no. It wasn't like that. She had Down syndrome. We can't use that. I know. I went to say something. I was going to stick up for myself. But she had hearing aids. I wasn't even sure she was going to hear it. So at the end of the day, the point is, it was just someone else shit in my mouth. Are you fucking... Okay. So she had Down syndrome and incontinence. And we're going to be feeling sorry for you here. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> Matey, tiger, buddy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I know Spielberg's not going to be here, dude. Why the fuck would he be here? Okay, I'm, I'm not that deluded. I know there's not going to be any critics or agents or directors here, and if they are, they probably got lost and came to the wrong fucking show. I get that, man. I only say that shit to put myself, and obviously you, because you're just as insecure as I am, into a positive frame of mind before the show. I remember those chicks. Of course I remember those chicks. They were fucking hot. And yeah, they were maybe a little bit revolted by you, but that's not you <laughs> now, man. That was back then, okay? I, I didn't have, I had my phone. I was just shitting myself that I'd fuck it up and then be depressed about it for six months. you got to throw that shit out now, man. That was then, this is now. Can we just focus on what we... Can I, can I say something to you, man, as a, as a mate? You put it out there, man. You really do. You're always scowling. You're always putting people down. You're making fun of everything. You might even do the Stanislavski warm-up. Well, so what? I'm a grumpy cunt. Yes, you are a grumpy cunt! But that doesn't fucking matter now. We've got one minute till we go on, man. Please, listen to me. Take all of this shit, roll it up into a ball, tie it up, and fucking get rid of it, because we need to go out there and perform. Can you do that for me? I'll give you a tip. Find a corner in the dressing room where I don't have to see you or hear you or smell you. Have a nice wake and clear your head. I'll see you on stage in a minute with the biggest fucking smile you've ever had on that Shrek-like head of yours, yeah? Well, I mean, what about like your feet? Fuck up, grow up. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding. Don't, for make, him, don't make him stand. Don't make him stand. <laughs> please remain sitting for Joel Spreadbar and Peter Adams. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. What is an actor? An actor is a vessel for which the spiritual and emotional essence of a story will flow. His performance is key to the audience's enjoyment of any given narrative, a position of great responsibility and tremendous gravitas. 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 I fucking read. So what is that? <laughs> Here's a three-part being. Here's one body. Close thing. Close thing. His body <laughs> is the vehicle, driving force for any performance, other than voiceover work. He must be strong, agile, and flexible with the ability to ingest vast amounts of cocaine. Secondly, his voice. Cock. The sound of the actor's soul. Cock. His most powerful and important tools. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. No, no, no. With it, he can convey the most joyous of emotions, ah. the most crippling of hurt. Ah. He could regale an audience with the most poignant monologue. To be or not to be. And sing the sweetest tune. I'm not Some singing. actors can sing. <laughs> Lastly, his mind. His fortress of solitude, his central processing unit, the core of his very being. Once an actor has set his mind on a thought, he cannot be distracted, disturbed, or deterred, or annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> he feels no shame. <laughs> this is what defines an actor. <laughs> ah! You said you weren't going to hit me, you You're piece of shit. You are <laughs> such a fucking idiot, man. Television commercial castings. Uh, Greg Rowland. No. Nasa and Sim. There's no one here. No. Look, dude, what's your name? Joel Spreadborough. Joel, yeah, we got you in. Come in, mate. Cool. So how's it all going? You uh, having a good day? Well, we'll just get name, age and agent just straight down the camera. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, Joel Spreadborough, I'm 28, and I'm with Excalibur Management. Right profile, left profile, and oh mate, that is one ugly mole. I'm not a doctor, I don't know if it's dangerous, but it is ugly, it's going to stop you from getting work, okay? Now which of the scripts did you get? I'm here for Heinz. Heinz? Did you get Toyota? No. Alright, let's do Toyota. 
We haven't corrected that one. Okay, now look, they're not looking for the same old car ad, okay? They don't want the same old car ad that you see all the time. So this is what they got. they got. You're looking at the car, just looking at the car. That's all they want to see is you looking at the car. Yep. But they want you to look at it like it's not a car. Okay. They want you to look at it like it's, uh, let's say, a lady sunbathing topless, okay? Just like any of us blokes would, just having a look. You yep. know? All right? So that's what we're doing. Ready? Ready? So where, where's the car? Is it sort of... Make it about there. Right. All right. Okay. All right. And give it to me. That's it. That's nice. Just like any of us. Just like any of us. In the bushes there. Find in the bushes. Just like any of us. Just like any of us. That's it. Get your iPhone out. Get your iPhone out. Grab some shots. Grab some shots. They're all right. Show them to the mates. Have a proof of weight. That's it. Just like any of us. Just like any of us. Watch out for the cops. Just. All right. Probably going a bit far here. Might be a bit creepy for Toyota. So Is it? I mean, we're going to bring it back a bit. Bring it back. Okay. And uh, so maybe she's not topless, we'll just say she's got a top on, okay? Yeah, right. Okay. Alright, so just a sunbathing chick there with a top on, and you're just looking up a miniskirt, okay? <laughs> so the, the car's wearing a miniskirt? The, the car girl? that's the girl that, with the miniskirt, yeah. you're looking up. Okay. Alright, ready, and all right, and give it to me, yep. <laughs> what can you see? What can you see? This is generally how a television commercial audition will tend to unfold. You see... When I see the dollars that are attached to a TVC commercial, that's when my inner whore really comes to life. Uh, over the years, I've been asked to do some pretty outrageous things. I've been asked to look at a can of Coke as though it's a cock, at a car as though it's a set of tits, at a set of tits as though they're a car. You see, the thing with ads is they're usually decided on by marketing departments and not directors, which basically means they're a big fucking lottery. Oh yeah, look it up there, what can you see? Alright now, give me the line. Oh, that's a cheesy spaghetti! Not lines, mate, Toyota. I didn't get a script, I don't know. Mate, it's Toyota, there's only one line. Okay. Uh, oh, what a feeling! That's it, and happy. Oh, what a feeling! So sad. Oh, what a feeling. Tense. Oh, what a feeling. Make a question. Oh, what a feeling? Yeah, alright, no, good work, Mr. Rowlings. I think we really got that one there. Alright, I'll be honest, they're actually looking for a female for this role, so yeah, we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot, so, you know, just some good stuff there. So, can I just, my agent sort of, I'm ready for hides. I mean, we've really got everything we need there. When you go, could you send Mr. Spreadborough in? <laughs> Independent theatre. Oh, Peter, hi. Uh, I was wondering if I could have a quick chat to you before you went on. I mean, I'm on in five. I really need yeah. to have focus. Yeah, look, it won't take anywhere near that long. I just, uh, how are you feeling? You excited about the first Yeah, thing? I mean, it's a good crowd, I think, you know. Yeah, well, it's pretty much a full house. That's why I wanted to have a chat to you. You see, I've, I've got a few concerns about Top of Act 2, the waterfall scene where you're watching Anne swim nude in the waterhole doing your yeah. monologue. Yeah. I think it's pretty spot on. Yeah, yeah, the blocking's good, the dialogue's good. I'm just not convinced that the audience is going to be able to make the physical connection to the conflict that you're experiencing at that time. Yeah. Bear with me. Well, obviously you're watching Anne, you're doing your monologue, and you're, you're aroused, but you're also conflicted because of what's happened earlier in the play. Yeah. I'm not sure the audience will be able to physicalise that unless you are standing there doing everything, but also pleasuring yourself. Hmm? Well, as I say, you're watching her, you're conflicted, you're also aroused, so you get it out and you jack off. Like, pretend. No, no, you do it for real. Pull it out and flog yourself. I don't think we can do oh, that. Oh, don't be stupid, Peter. It's independent theatre. It's raw. It's gritty. It's, it's going to be a little bit distracting if I'm thinking my lines and wanking. Is it a size thing? Are it's you worried about the size? Not, it's not a size thing. It's a size thing. I knew it. You have a small cock. If I would have thought of it yesterday, I would have bought my penis pump from home. But <laughs> I'm just not going to be comfortable out there wanking myself off in front of everyone. Peter? I have either wanked off or been wanked off no less than 17 times on the professional stage. In everything from Equus to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves when I played Doc. Grumpy helped me. It's the only time I ever saw the little cunt smile. Okay, look, I'm just not going What if someone helped you? Not really the issue. What if one of the girls? One of the girls. One of the girls, of course. Cindy. What about Cindy? She's a, a, a tr attractive, I mean, Cindy. I mean, would she? I think she would, Peter. <laughs> I think she would because she's a professional. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, if it's just me. Okay, so just to make it clear, you don't have a problem with being jerked off on stage as long as someone else is doing the jerk. I mean, it's in, yeah, yeah. Peter, I mean, yeah. focus. Yeah. Do you or do you not have an issue with being beaten off on stage yeah, as long as it's someone else I'm, doing it? No, it's oh, all good. It's okay, all good. good. I'm so relieved. I was really worried. It's such a poignant moment, and I think it needs to be physical. You and Cindy will make a good pairing. I think it'll work. Whoa, wait a minute. What? What? No. Cindy can't do it. Cindy's in the big wedding scene immediately after. She's got the wardrobe change and the hair. And that won't work. Oh, who else could possibly? 
Jane. Jane's in the scene as well, Peter. Have you read the play? Yeah, she's yeah. got the makeup. She's got. It's just, who Sarah. Sarah. Yeah, that's no. Between you and me, the less time she spends on stage, the better, Peter. She's hideous. <laughs> who else? You know, I'll be free. We haven't really practiced. I think <laughs> like, but we should probably just. Peter, did you or did you not just say to me that you didn't have an issue with being flogged off on stage as long as it was someone yeah, else? No, I know, but like, I'll Peter, to... did you or did you not agree verbally to being beaten off on stage by someone else? Yeah. Okay, no. let's run it. Okay, no. so Act Two: the curtains open, the lights come up. She's here, Anne's here, doing her thing. You're watching. Yeah. Okay, you'll be in position. Yeah. I'll be here. I'll be preset. <laughs> All right. Okay. No. All of a sudden, ooh, look. Right. It's me, Peter. All right, and then you're watching, watching, yeah. and no, I'm oh, no, 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 that, yeah. that's not, yeah. no, no, it's not feeling good. How about now? Ah, oh. yeah. <laughs> now do your monologue for me. Do your monologue. I'm unconscious. Do your monologue. It's just like watching Mum in the shower. Ah, <laughs> oh. no, no, man, that didn't work. That was too weird. That didn't work. No, believe me, Peter, that worked spectacularly. I. I don't think it could have possibly gone any better, <laughs> to be honest with you. But I do take your point, it's a little bit rushed tonight. So what we'll do is we'll get you in an hour early tomorrow and we'll try it again. <laughs> I'm not going to confirm or deny whether this was an incident that may or may not have happened <laughs> at the backstage of an independent theatre show. What I will say is as an overweight bald man trying to make it in an industry that is isn't typically obsessed with physical appearance, I have often found myself to be the butt of on-stage and on-screen jokes. However, that humiliation pales in comparison in the light of a real-life incident that occurred to me in the city of Venice 1.2 hours after eating a rancid olive. <laughs> Let me take you there. Venice. I was in an internet cafe with my girlfriend. Hi. I was kind of looking sexy. And uh, we were booking a ticket from Rome to Paris. When all of a sudden I was like... Babe, we've got to go... Just give me five more minutes, Peter. We're almost finished. And then I was just like, <laughs> "We've got to go now." Why, Pete? What's the matter? What's the oh, matter? It's like a suicide bomber just went off in my colon. Jihad! <laughs> I walked down to the Venice Street. There were these little stickers on the road that were like leading in the direction of the public toilets. So kind of like a bog road breadcrumb trail. <laughs> I start to walk. <laughs> And I knew each step was either taking me closer to the mercy of the toilets or closer to total public humiliation. So I decided to pick up my speed. My body warned against it. I resumed a more normal speed. Every 20 metres or so, I just resigned myself to the fact I was going to have to run into an alleyway and humiliate myself. My girlfriend was always there with words of encouragement. If you do that, we're fucking over. I carried on. Rounding yet another corner, I spotted the end of the breadcrumb bread, bread trail to the oh. box. A public toilet with an insane Italian lady standing out the front dancing to the sound of no music. I began to approach and she broke her delta-like rhythm and I asked, how much to use her facilities? Uh, 150 euros, sir. Uh, Italian, Italian, Italian. Can't fucking do that. Okay. <laughs> 150 euros, senor. I've only got 120. Sorry, ha <laughs> ha. I explained the situation to my girlfriend. Uh -huh. She wanted 150, Ooh. I only had 120. <laughs> the problem was, in the pursuit of the public toilets, I'd now put an impossible distance between me and my hotel room. Da, da, da. The only option left was the restrooms of the nearest McDonald's. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I pushed on. The rest of the journey was a bit of a blur. Who am I? Where am I? Do you say this shit? <laughs> Until I reached the last canal bridge. <laughs> And I looked into the filthy brown Venetian waters and I thought, if I just hang my ass over here and do it, will anyone even notice? Hmm. Then I saw the potential victims, a line of singing gondoliers. <laughs> <laughs> I imagined the outcome. It's amore. Ah, oh, mamma mia, mirror to eat in my eyes. And I pushed on some actors, eventually entering the house of Ronald. <laughs> I didn't want to just seem like some crazed tourist bolting for the bogs, so I just pretended I was there to casually peruse the menu. Oh, hey, how's it going? Cheeseburger, sounds good. <laughs> Before bolting for the bogs. <laughs> All three toilets were engaged. Oh, God. <laughs> the handicapped stall, my last option. Hmm. The lock was broken. Now, typically, in a normal stall, that's not a problem. You just put your leg up and hold it shut. <laughs> uh, 
In a handicapped stall, the door is never more, never less than 2.5 metres away. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. I ran in, pulled my pants down, sat on the toilet, and in 0.3 of a second, <laughs> had released 17 litres of liquid Satan into the world. Diablos shittios. I thought it was over, until I looked down and saw a perfect golden stream of piss going straight onto my pants. I panicked. <laughs> lifting my legs while simultaneously punching my cock to redirect the flow. <laughs> I thought I'd succeeded. I thought the ordeal was over. I went for the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> My last hope. A half-used McDonald's napkin <laughs> sat on the bench in front of me. I grabbed it. It stunk of McNuggets and french fries. Mm, yeah. I began to clean myself up. And at this point, I started to giggle. In fact, laugh quite heartily as I thought this is quite a funny story to tell one day. And it was at that point, point I heard... <laughs> I never saw who opened and closed the door. But I realised the only thing they would have been confronted with was an overweight foreign man sitting on the handicapped toilet, standing in piss-soaked pants, wiping his ass, giggling. <laughs> <laughs> There is no moral to this story, there is no lesson, you are not better people that you, now that you've heard it. It is just simply another chapter in the overweight bald man's sad life. <laughs> Picking up from there, if you have a disposition towards vanity, pursuing any kind of career in the performing arts is basically an effective way of magnifying that vanity several thousand times over. Case in point, I'm about to go and see a doctor to ask him to perform expensive and unnecessary minor surgery to have a completely harmless mole removed from my neck simply because someone, a casting director, pointed it out to me and made me feel very fucking ugly. <laughs> Hi, Doctor. Um, thanks for seeing me. I was just hoping that you might be able to help me sort of get rid of this mole because it makes me feel sort of... Why? There's nothing wrong with it. It's simply ugly. Yeah, well, that's sort of the point. I, I don't like people looking at me and thinking... Tell that. me about your family's medical history. OK. Uh, I have an aunt who has some respiratory issues. I've got a, a friend that has some uh, <coughs> mental health issues and a bit of a small <laughs> penis. And he's got a what about the prostate? Oh, it's, I'm 20. Any family history of prostate? I don't know, man. I was just... I'm going to check your prostate. <laughs> yeah, I was really hoping that we could just focus. I don't do it because it's fun, you know. I do it because it's medically necessary. Now stand up in front of me and shut up. <laughs> what exactly are you um, <clears throat> going to do here? Quiet! <laughs> Pull your pants down. Just, can you give me now an idea? relax. What are you going to do to me? I just want to know what you're going to do. I'm going to finger your butthole. <laughs> Does it hurt, though, or is it sort of... I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Relax. I can feel you're not relaxed. <laughs> Here. Continue the crossword in this magazine. Some of my patients help me, it helps them relax. It's on page 44. Okay, uh, 27 across. You are abbreviated. Your. Yeah, that's right. Uh, seven down, two letters, indication of ownership. My. Uh, 16 across. Female dog. Bitch. <laughs> Look, you're still not relaxing. Aren't I? No. Okay. Perhaps a little bit of small talk. All right. Maybe we should just get to know each other. Yeah, sounds great. Tell me about yourself. What do you do? Well, I'm uh, trying to be an actor. <laughs> what, might I, what might I have seen you in? Oh, have you ever seen the movie Daybreakers? That was years ago. <laughs> no one would care about that. What are you doing currently? Well, there's a uh, couple of profit share productions that I'm sort of loosely tied to and they're, they're trying to get a bit of crowdfunding going for a feature film and I'm on hold for a few things. Things are a bit quiet at the Shut moment. Shut the fuck up, Joel. <laughs> How much longer do you think this is going to take? I don't understand you. I'm performing an examination that is vital to the health of a young adult male <gasps> and you're worried about a mole. A hideous, hideous mole. <laughs> <sighs> Do you really think it's hideous? It's uh, disgusting. 
You're not planning on going to Hollywood, are you? Maybe. I mean, do you think that that'll have an effect on my... <laughs> well, all I know is the uglier you are, the more cock you have to suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about the prostate? Is it, is it all right? Am I good? Am Can I... I be honest? Please. I didn't really check it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't bother till you're 50. <laughs> and get out. Interval! What, what do you know? Dude, it's only an hour show. We can't have an interval. Always have an interval. Dude, we can't have an interval in an hour yeah, show. Have an interval. interval. You have an interval. Look, if there's people that aren't enjoying the show, it gives them a chance to leave. <laughs> They're not going to leave, are they? I mean, it doesn't matter. matter. They're paid. Who cares? <laughs> Dude, I've been, I've been thinking about that shit you said before the show about it, you know. That are not being any good. Like, it's really hey, funny. Hey, you wrote half the show, dude. Don't. <laughs> hey, oh, I, I get that, man. I'm just saying that it's just made me think that I just think we're capable of writing smarter things and like stuff with some meaning and some subtext and, and a message that people can take away. Oh, I thought it was going to fart. Sorry, go on. <laughs> no, I just think we're, we're better than this. You know, all we're doing is talking about wanking and fingering each other's assholes and. Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> I was just hey, hoping that. Hey, hey, hey. We have this discussion every time, and at the end of the day, like I said, I just don't think we're smart enough, okay? <laughs> I mean, we try to write clever stuff, and it just comes off like dog shit, okay? So, you know, oh, just right. let it be. I'm just thinking, like, in the second half, maybe we can improvise a skit that has... <laughs> oh! The second one got out. The second one got fucking grub, man! <laughs> Go and have a shit, man! Yeah, That's nah, fucking... We've got to do the dating skit. We've got to do the dating one. Dating. <laughs> hey man, how's your day? Huh? Oh yeah, I got, got fingered by a doctor. You? Yeah, got wanked off by a director. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, um, I joined that site, that dating site you told us about, uh, plenty of chicks. <laughs> yeah, nice. Got my first date tonight. Oh, player. Yeah, yeah. I was actually uh, talking to a girl today as well, mate. Got myself a date also. Good stuff, good stuff. You know my inbox was full in like 20 minutes. <laughs> what? How? 20 minutes. Dude, I was just more honest than I've ever been. Like, just super honest. Ridiculously honest. Yeah, right. But honesty never really occurred to me. Just... Oh, no, I just sit down. <laughs> just, just looking for cheap sex-filled flings. Hoping to make it ongoing if from click. You know, pretty much out for anything, no matter how kinky. You know, just all that stuff. And, and that worked with the I've girl. I've got a date tonight. Tell me about your girl. Oh well, yeah, she's um, she seems pretty into it. She uh, told me to dress nasty for the occasion. So. Yeah, I'll tell Morgan to do that. <laughs> she um, this is a bit weird. She said she doesn't want to have dinner. She just wants to meet at the restaurant, have a drink, and then go and fuck who knows, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, like, how good it is it if someone wants to actually forego the dinner obligation? <laughs> like, it's good. I know it's awesome, but it's just rare, man. Like, what, what? That's what this chick is sort of. Cool, because she just seems to be really in tune with the male mind. I think I'm just going to get a night of crazy fucking sex for cool. nothing. Well, I'm happy for you, mate. But I've got to go wash my balls. I'm gonna, I'll see you tomorrow. Cool, man. Hi, I um, <clears throat> had a reservation for two. Name? Uh, a little larger than usual. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> uh, hey, just some water, please. Thanks. Oh, uh... Hey! Hey! Hey, man! Hey. Didn't expect to see you here. No, well, this is where she wanted to meet me. We're not having dinner, we're just gonna... Rock on, rock yeah. on. Uh, yeah, um, someone booked it for me. It was for two... I think it might have been a fat check, a little larger than usual. Oh, fuck! What the hell is that? be true! You're seriously slutty! Dude, why are you asking blokes now? Why are you a No, chick? no, 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 no. If you are gay, just be gay, okay? I'm Embrace it and dude, dig I'm the not cock. No dude. more lies! Embrace I'm it! Lying. I'm saying it! I'm not saying it! Say it! Dude, I'm, I'm not saying it! I love the cock! I love the cock! <laughs> I love the cock! I love the cock! If I say it, will you shut the fuck up? Sure. I love the cock. And doesn't that feel better? No! Than you fucking idiot! Listen to me! Your profile on Plenty of Chicks says that you're a fucking female. What do you mean? <laughs> Your name is seriously slutty. You say you have a curvy figure. 
you say that you're fucking shaved. I do sometimes. Dude, you say you have big tits. I do. <laughs> that aside, man, why do you think your inbox was full? You're like a one in a million girl that just all wants right, to... All right, all right, all right. Look, trust me, lots are starting to make sense now. <laughs> oh! Oh! I gave you access to my private You saw my fucking dick pics! Yeah, okay. Granted, I did think that was a bit weird. <laughs> I just thought you were like one of these chicks, that was like your Hall of Fame, all the dudes you'd done, and it was like notches in your belt. <laughs> oh my god, you were so fucked in the head, man. Chicks don't think like that. You're not normal, man. That is not normal. And right, 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 right. Look, look. Hey. At the end of the day, I've got a four dollar fifty bag of goon. I mean, we're in a nice restaurant, we dress kind of nice, let's just make a night of it. <laughs> okay, longer than most dates. Now, as an actor between gigs, uh, you sort of kind of become more and more desperate as the gap goes on, and when your pretty much auditions or important meetings will take priority over anything else in your life. So when I finally secure a meeting with my agent, who's been avoiding me for weeks because I don't make him any money, at the same time my sister calls me to pick my niece up from daycare because she's just had a serious accident, I'm conflicted. Um, so priorities. Peter! Yeah. Oh, Peter! Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for coming in. Good to meet you. Didn't pull you away from anything important, did I? I have got a meeting, I need to go, but your secretary said, <laughs> secretary said it was a bit of an emergency. <laughs> ah, daughter, she has a wicked sense of humour. No, not at all. I just want to have a little chat to you about the, uh, the wee one. What's her name, the little girl? Ah, uh, Gabby. Gabby, that's it. Yeah. Have I, a seat. Look, I actually wasn't meant to pick her up till three. Is, is there anything wrong? No, not at all, Peter. She is completely stable. I just wanted mm. to. Before we go into all of that, let me give you a little idea about how things work here at Kepler Montgomery's daycare centre. <laughs> Peter, I want to take you on a little journey. Imagine for me, if you will, an individual who likes art. They study art, they work in art, they live, they breathe art. Every day, it's art, art, art. <laughs> now say, for instance, this particular individual decides to invest in a daycare centre. I think it's fair to assume that the artistic influence would permeate its way into the centre, yeah? Sure. Now take me. I am a former elite special forces paratrooper who spent seven years in a Somalian prison camp being pissed on by pirates. Now, I own a daycare centre. So when one of your little shits pisses all over my floor, what do you think this does to a man like me, yeah? Did Gabby piss on the floor? It's not entirely clear, Peter. She didn't make it that far through the interrog... <laughs> it seems likely. Well, I mean, there's lots of kids here. How do you know? Was it just... That is a good point, Peter, and I'm a fair man. Until she regains consciousness, we cannot be sure. <laughs> consciousness? Well, you know, nap time, yeah? Nap time. <laughs> Look, where's your accent from? Where are you from? <laughs> well, uh, <coughs> Zimbabwe, uh, South Africa. Depends how many beers I've had before the show. Sometimes Thailand, Canada, New Zealand. <laughs> but that's not what we're here to discuss, man. All right? In my experience, Peter, I tend to find that these sort of, sort of behaviours are learned from the home environment. So the reason I want to have a little bit of a chat to you is to basically ask you, do you piss on the floor? <laughs> I haven't in months. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, that's why I'm laughing, man. It's all one big fucking joke, isn't it? Until one of your little shitheads pisses all over my floor, that's when the laughter has to stop, yeah? Well, depending how it happens, it might be when it starts. You're a bit of a funny man, aren't you, Peter? <laughs> like to come in and have a bit of a chuckle at other people's expense. Is that what you do at your house? You get your friends over and everyone pulls their pants down and pisses and shits all over the place? Everyone has a nice little giggle dipping their hands in it and fucking around? Yeah? Is that your idea of apartheid? I mean, a party? <laughs> Look, I mean, she's fine. Man. It might have just been an accident. An accident? Drowning a child during a routine waterboarding is an accident. This was malicious. What do you do, Peter? Me? I'm an actor and I'm actually... Now, what about I've seen you in, man? Um, I did a few Sea Patrol things, was it was a while ago. Sea Patrol? No one gives a fucking shit about that. That was ten years ago. What are you doing lately? Um, well, there's a few profit share things I'm kind of involved with, and there's a feature film I'm trying to get a bit of, you know, sort of crowdfunding for, and on hold for a couple of things. The industry's a bit slow. Shut the fuck up, Peter! Yeah? I've seen guys like you before, running around with your head up your ass, dreaming of a career in the silver screen. Yeah? 
You've got about as much chance as I do. Look at you. You have a body like a bloody bloated baboon. I've got big game hunting at home in Transvaal and shoot smaller mammals than you. Here you are running around pissing around with your acting while your niece is running around pissing around on my floor. Look, mate, this is insane. No! Insane is being gang raped by a pack of hungry hyenas for a warlord's birthday party entertainment. Okay. This is merely discipline. Okay, look, can I just grab Gabby? I've got to go, okay? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Peter. See, the thing is, I want to chat to you about that. You see, what's happened with Gabby is she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't want to be a prick, but if my niece is dead, <laughs> then there's nothing I can really do for her now that I couldn't do after the meeting, so... <laughs> Sometimes I lay awake at night thinking to myself agent. We need to do a scene about the agents that we that represent us in our life because no one really sees what it's really like to deal with an agent. So meeting with your agent. Good save. Thanks, man. <laughs> ah, Gary. Hey Pete. How are you going, mate? Yeah, Good to well, see yeah. ya. I didn't pull you away from anything important, did I? Mm, no, look, the main thing on my mind right now is I was just speaking with Joel. And Love Joel. Love him. Yeah. <laughs> he's <laughs> doing really well at the moment. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be a star. Yeah, look, he, was, he was just saying he's just got another audition with Mulligan's casting. Yes, he does. He's doing very well. Mulligan's loves him. Look, <laughs> when am I going to get a casting with them? I get passed up on for everything. Oh, Pete, come on. Don't start the sympathetic bullshit, mate. You know I love you both. You're both, you're both just awesome, but... You can't go comparing yourself to Joel, matey. I mean, look at him. He's rugged. He's handsome. He's got that great energy. The ladies love him. He's hilarious. And you, you're... Which is good, too. I, I think there's lots of opportunities for you. I get briefs all the time for pedophiles, rapists, <laughs> and people suffering heart attacks. So lots of ads. Lots of Man, ads. I'm sick of ads. I'm glad you said that. Fountain Face called for you yesterday saying, oh, please, please send Peter. I said, no. He's an actor with integrity and he's not interested in commercials. Well, hell, man, how much were they offering? Oh, 18 grand or something. Yes, for 18 grand! Always, yes, all for right, 18 all grand. All right, mate. I'm Always. Glad you said that because there is another one here for McDonald's for 1,200. Dude, they're not going to put me in a McDonald's commercial, man. I'm the result of too much McDonald's. <laughs> they don't want to show that on their ads. I mean, I can't be your only actor that thinks like this. Okay, if there's lots of money involved, I'll do anything. But if it's not a lot of money, I want it to be a cool project or a good opportunity. You're right. You're absolutely right. Joel would be perfect for McDonald's. Oh, I'll see if I can get him to up the pay. Wait, look, just, just be honest, okay? Just, just, just <laughs> tell me the truth. Have I been, like, blacklisted at McDonald's? <laughs> I mean, am I some, like, sort of no-go list? <laughs> oh, my God, you're so insecure. Don't be ridiculous, Pete. They wouldn't... There are so many casting directors in this town. I don't know why you're so infatuated with getting in with money. I mean, I just, I just, I want to be in something where I'm not just the ball guy or the fat guy. I know, I know, and I want that for you too, but it's so hard for me because you are the bald and the fat guy. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> McLennan's. I was meant to call you about this the other day. McLennan's is doing the new Fitness First commercial. Fitness First, there's not going to be anything for me there. <laughs> no, normally, no. But this one, they have a... Fat, bald, overweight, treadmill man, overweight, obese, and fat. They say overweight and fat twice, do they? Yeah, well, I've, con I've condensed it a little bit. But he's, uh, he's uh, the, the comic relief of the ad. He's running on the treadmill and he falls over and everyone's laughing at him because he's so fucking fat. How much? Are there any actual acting gigs, man? Like... like Oh, yes. They're doing a new Underbelly series. Underbelly Shaven. They're doing the whole series in slow motion. That sounds awful. There's a bad guy role that you'd be great for. All right, yep. So a lot of intensity, a lot of sort of dramatic, dark moments. He's yep. got a big monologue. He shoots, cool. goes on a rampage, yep. gets out of jail and all With that. character brief, character brief. Yeah, 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 just... Overweight pedophile <laughs> rapist. Uh, has a heart attack and gets gunned down in the McDonald's drive through <laughs> They gun him down after his heart attack. Well, it's underbelly, Peter. They tend to overwrite. But yes, that's what happens. Okay, has he got a name? Baldy. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
Don't decide now, I've got a million more important things to do, so why don't you run along and uh, I'll send you an email sometime yeah. in the next eight months. Oh, okay, get <laughs> okay, see you matey. I also lay awake at night on other occasions thinking to myself, have I done the right thing, you know, not pursuing my degree and pursuing a whimsical career in the performing arts? Like, I could have a job where people gave a fuck about me and respected me and, and I could put food on the table every day and pay my rent, but who gives a fuck? Just a little heads up, um, neither of us have ever really been to a proper job interview before, so this is kind of a ballpark idea of what we think <laughs> might be like. Real world job interview. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Mr. Spreadborough, we are so glad we were able to secure you for a job interview, being that you are so highly sought after in the industry of insurance. Yes, well, I am very, very good at insurance. <laughs> As am I. Splendid. I am so glad I chose to pursue a sensible career rather than frittering my time away on whimsical silliness. Yes, I too am glad that I work 85 hours a week and make 750,000 grand a year. Ah, well, should you be successful in securing this position, I can guarantee you no less than 100 hours a week. Capital! I will finally be able to cast off the chains of life which slow me down, like my children. And also pursue yet another divorce this month. Ah, and like me, you can take on a mistress who causes you no problems and never wants any money. Spectacular. So, what can you bring to this company? Well, I'm glad you asked. I was up all night thinking about that very question. You see, I think here at Butt Rape Insurance, you lack a certain amount of vision and strategy. And I think, with my expertise, we would be able to pursue and exploit boutique markets of insurance, such as... Well, you certainly know your insurance lingo. <laughs> and I like the fact that you use the word exploit. Capital. Oh, hired. Hmm. What is the matter? Well, for the first time in my insurance career, I find the need to be honest. This is a word we frown upon within the insurance industry. <laughs> However, carry on, perhaps you will say something that I can later use to blackmail you. Productive thinking. Well, I hope you don't want to staple my scrotum to the desk upon hearing this, but sometimes I lay awake at night thinking to myself, should I have not gone to university and pursued a career in another field that interests me slightly, such as acting? Well... I too have a confession to make. Please, I can reciprocate your blackmail with great interest. You see, amongst my peers, I am often considered the funny one of the group. <laughs> yes, and it is often that I lay awake at night masturbating, thinking to myself, I wonder what it would have been like had I chosen to pursue a career in comedy. Then I ejaculate, roll over in it, and go to sleep. <laughs> but there is always that question. What if? Yes, what if? I mean, sure, to start off with for the first ten years or so, we would be performing in dank venues, possibly under a pub. Mm. But then I'm sure things would eventually get better. One day we might even learn to write clever and funny endings to our skits, instead of re relying on anal and sex crime humour. Yes, well, a journey for another life. Indeed. Indeed. Welcome to Buffray. Thank you. I look forward to getting heavily involved in butt rape. Well, I hope that one day you'll lead the charge in butt rape. Butt rape. Butt rape. Backstage. <sighs> Fuck. That could have been, could, could have been worse. No, no, no. Could have been worse. Yes. Could have not turned up at all. That would have yeah. probably been the only thing. Yeah. Dude. I just, that shit you said at the start oh. really fucked with my head, oh, man. Oh, you, 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 I don't mind that you did, but why are you still blaming me for it? I'm right? just saying, man, like, I was, we're just capable of writing stuff that helps people grow and change their perspective, and I was hoping that maybe that last skit that we made up on the spot had some sort of meaning to it, some subtext, and then show that, like, as an actor, it's, 
it's a way of life, and it's not just something that gives you an excuse to smoke crack and be on Centrelink. It's, it's, it means more than that. And Any vague sort of message that we might have had in that last skit just got lost in the avalanche of butt rape calls at the end. <laughs> <laughs> got a little bit carried away, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, it's funny, though. Butt rape's no, a funny concept. No, 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 no. It's a funny word. It's a horrible act. Yeah. <laughs> so, dude, I just... I was just thinking, like, don't think about it. You get upset. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> don't. I can't understand <laughs> shit you say when you're crying. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> what are you saying? I was just saying it. The show was meant to go for an hour, and we've only been going for about twenty-five minutes. <laughs> we can't even come up with an hour of butt rape jokes. <laughs> Do we have to like give back two dollars fifty? No, I'm not giving back any fucking money. Oh, 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 hey, hey, hey! Look, calm down, calm down. All right? Okay, shh. Remember back to the first rehearsal yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, we got together. We had a bunch of old skits that had to be written. We had three hours of spare time. We had twenty dollars to spend on on train fares. Did you give your receipt? No, I didn't. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we pulled something together. Now, remember on Wednesday night when we went to see that Fringe Theatre show after our show? Yeah. And they spent months writing that script. Uh, they spent months rehearsing it, thousands of dollars putting it on, uh, and it sucked. <clears throat> Please be advised that the opinions expressed by the individuals on stage are not necessarily those of Spreadman's Comedy or the Sydney Fringe Festival. <laughs> yeah, I agree, man. They fucking sucked. It sucked. You know? And I'm just, you know, I'm just... I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, we should... Don't worry about it, okay? Look, hey, at the end of the day, I crave the same things creatively that you crave. You know, I want the audience to walk out of here with wet patches on their seat and just <laughs> emotionally moved, okay? You know, but yeah, I'm sure one day we'll do a good show, okay? Why well, can't it be today? But I mean, just don't, <laughs> don't stress about it. Too. Oh, oh, dude! Is that like revenge for Interval? I had a kebab. That is fucking show. gross. I'm sorry. Roll up. We need you guys we to can't leave. Exit we can't leave. You guys have to go. <laughs> No, no, seriously, can you, can you go? <laughs>